Tonight, some of the world's most influential people, as determined by Time magazine, are attending the Time 100 Gala. This year, the list includes artists, researchers, and revolutionaries who showed that the power of people is stronger than the people in power, as Google executive and Egyptian revolution leader Wael Gonim puts it. The list also includes the powerful. President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton make their sixth appearances on the list. Vice President Biden makes his first. Four Republicans are also making their debut. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, House Speaker John Boehner, Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan, and Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Each entry is accompanied by flattering words from an admirer. Rush Limbaugh wrote of Bachman, if she were liberal, she'd be celebrated from the mountaintops. But she's conservative, so because she is smart, talented, and accomplished and a natural leader, not to mention attractive, the left brands her as a flame-throwing lightweight. They underestimate her at their own risk. Time publishes such nonsense without embarrassment because it is desperately trying to stay afloat in a sea of sinking print publications. If a few thousand Bachman fanatics buy the magazine, then Rush's lie about her being smart will be worth printing. Time's readers will have to look elsewhere to find Michelle Bachman's not smart statements about how the founding fathers worked, quote, tirelessly until slavery was no more in the United States. Joining me now is the founder of FromForum.com, David Frum. David, you may be the 101st most influential uh, person, but right. you didn't make this phony list. These lists are always phony. Right. We, they put on Lady Gaga and different people in the hopes that the fans of the different people on the list will buy the magazine. And in this case, they seem to be spreading it out politically. Well, they promised me that if anybody twisted a tendon, I'd be promoted to varsity. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, but what do you make of the of this shift? Palin off the list. I mean, there does seem to be, on the political list there, there does seem to be something real happening. Well, the, the list is actually, from on the Republican side, actually pretty smart. I mean, those mm -hmm. are important people. Um, and they do carry a lot of weight. Michelle Bachman, let's not forget, in 2010, her personal fundraising outraised John Boehner's personal fundraising. I raised a lot more for other committees, but that, that commands attention. Paul Ryan obviously is shaping this whole political dialogue setting up for 2012 with his um, very bold budget plan. Uh, Chris Christie, a lot of people look to him as maybe a pinch hitter for the presidential race. So that, that, I, I, I think they've chosen well. Is Michelle Bachman actually leading anyone, as, as Rush says that she is? Um, she is a voice for an important faction in the Republican Party, and there is going to be an intensifying debate between the faction represented by her and that Donald Trump is now trying to muscle his way into, and that is a very angry base that has been squeezed very hard by negative economic facts, and then the leadership cadre of the Republican Party that, it, for now at least, is parked with Mitt Romney and is giving him money and is counting on him through the weight of the traditional organizations of the party to muscle his way through to the nomination. Now, what happens to Michelle Bachman if she does run for president, and what happens to her if she doesn't run for president in terms of holding on to what is now apparently the, or formerly, the Sarah Palin slot as most influential female Republican? Well, she may not make the time party next year, but um, uh, what she had... Look, she's a harder working version of Sarah Palin. You have to give her that. She is conscientious. She shows up for work. Yeah. She, shows she hasn't up for work. quit. She, she's serving out her full term. Yeah. And uh, she, but she speaks to something. There is a level of economic distress in this country that I think both political parties have not paid sufficient attention to. And what, after all, is the president's response uh, to the uh, economic crisis? Well, we did our stimulus, and that doesn't seem to have worked. And now I'm just watching my clock and hoping that something happens. Um, that, that. I think we should understand all of these strange characters who show up in a year like this as people speaking to deep economic anxiety. The American public is still the same level-headed, generous, um, tolerant public it always was, but it is stressed in a way it has not been stressed maybe since World War II. Now, two people making the list from what was the Republican side, the Koch brothers, uh, big uh, financiers of behind-the-scenes movements in uh, conservative politics. Uh, is it uh, uh, do you feel, the, is it your sense that they are uncomfortable with this public emergence that's occurred for them? Well, um, uh, uh, 
as well as never having met uh, the Time to 100, I haven't met them. But let me just say this about the Koch brothers. It's an important thing, especially for the audience for a program like this to understand. Their power is an artifact of successive attempts to reform the campaign finance laws. The reason that people like them and like George Soros and other huge funders have so much power is because the, the money flow has been turned off to the existing parties through the instrumentalities of things like McCain, Feingold. It, and everything that has been done to so-called reform American politics, which is to cut the flow of money to the parties, empowers these wealthy individuals. And if you want to disempower them, you can't get the money out of politics, but you can make it throw through the, clarify, flow through the party machinery. What the campaign finance law does is it controls in very limited doses how much money people can deliver directly to candidates, just thousands of dollars, right. uh, and then controls in very limited doses how much you can deliver to actual parties, Democrat, Republican. Then there's these unlimited but, but you, amounts that they can give to these other entities that are supposed to be unrelated and not coordinated well, with the speak. campaigns. The, the, the First Amendment says anybody who wants to say something about politics can say something about politics. So if you have $17 billion and would like to buy $17 billion worth of political advertising, you can. If you have $17 billion and would like to support to a candidate. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be, even if you did allow larger amounts of money to go directly to candidates or directly to parties, why wouldn't they still be doing this with the outside groups? They didn't do it before. Uh, before the, the, the money was turned off, they didn't do it. And because everybody recognized it's a much less efficient way to influence the process. If you could write a check for a million dollars to a party, that would make more sense. And that's going to have to be the last word. David Frum, founder of FrumForum.com, thank you for joining me tonight.